today I can honestly tell you that for the subject matter that we're going to be discussing today, I don't think there is anyone in this entire world who understands whitetail nutrition anywhere near to the extent of this man right here. Todd Stiddleberg, the antler king himself, has devoted his entire adult life to simply understanding and then figuring out how to deliver the precise levels of nutrients that whitetails need. Todd, explain deer digestion to us because there's all sorts of people out there that, yeah, they get it, but why can't I go down to the farm surplus store and buy the exact same cattle supplements that are good for my dairy cows for the whitetails? Deer have different needs. They've got a little bit smaller uh, first stomach, uh, significantly smaller than than cattle and, and sheep and so Proportionately. on. So. A cow's first chambered stomach is much larger yes. compared to proportionately the white tail. Percentage wise, yeah. Yep. You know, they're all different critters. God made them all different and we got to treat them differently. Deer ruminants, so that means they, they have four stomachs, if you will, and, and all four of those stomachs perform some different functions. But for the most part, what it allows them to do is to digest pretty highly fibrous food sources. You and I could get a handful of clover and chew on it and eat it, but we're really not going to be able to digest it a whole, really that well. Whereas deer are able to, to break that down and really utilize um, so much of the protein and energy within that clover. You hit on the term digestion. It mm -hmm. doesn't matter what we eat. It matters what we're able to digest and utilize. Exact same for white tails. Oh, it is. You know, there's a lot of dead plants out there. Well, deer could fill their stomachs up with those dead plants, but they're really not able to get much anything out of them. You know, they're expending more energy trying to digest that, that uh, dead grass and so on than what they can actually get the energy out of that dead grass. So, you know, the other thing to keep in mind is many people in the upper Midwest will, will uh, all of a sudden go out in February because we've gotten a cold snap, or maybe January. Yeah. And they feel sorry for the wildlife, they feel sorry for the deer, and they'll put out a five gallon pail of corn or whatever. You're really not benefiting the animal at all. If they're not used to eating corn on a daily basis, it'll take their system a week to 10 days in, in many instances to change over, if you will, the, the microorganisms in their rumen and their other parts, their other stomachs to start breaking down a food source they're not used to. The biology within the stomach is actually evolving to help break down whatever their current diet is. Those whitetails, they've been out there eating buds for the past month. Mm -hmm. okay. The microbes within their stomachs have evolved specifically to break down those buds. What they do to help that is they eat different species. Sure. And the different species help work together actually to break down that even more. Now you go ahead and here is a pile of easy picking high carb corn right there. And I just go ahead, I sit here and I just that quick have sucked down two, three pounds of it. What does that do you know, to my biology in my stomach? I've always told people that, you know, if you're going to do a feeding program, um, commit to it. You know, it's, it's, it's not a part-time thing. It's not a one and done thing. It's, you know what, if you're gonna do it, commit to it. Um, feed a quality, highly digestible product that's, that's, you know, not really high in protein in the winter months. That's not near as important as energy is. But I think the thing to take away is commit to it. So we have to be careful over winter feeding because of how the microbes go ahead and adjust. How important it is that they're able to actually digest the stuff. Whether we're talking about digestibility in uh, a feeding program, digestibility in a mineral feeding program, or even digestibility in food plots. You know, that varies significantly Certainly. based on the age of the plant, you know, how mature it is or how young it is and so on. You know, digestibility is very important. It, takes, it plays a huge role in the amount of protein that a deer can get out of food sources, the amount of energy they can get out of food sources, the amount of minerals and vitamins they can get out of food sources plays a huge role. What it amounts to is every animal out there, species of animal out there is different. They all have their own differences. If we want to do the maximum amount of good, we need to cater our nutrition yes. program to the animals we're trying to do the maximum amount of good of. And then we have to understand 
how different things are more digestible than others. And one of the biggest keys is when it comes to minerals. Food plots as well, but right. mainly minerals, but certainly minerals because they are generally more difficult for whitetails to digest. And what passes out the backside undigested, the only good that did is made our wallet a little bit thinner. <laughs> So, Todd, what I gathered from all of this is that every species of animal has different abilities to digest different types of plant matter. You want to cater, if you want to do the most good, you want to specifically target your nutrition for the species you're trying to help. In this case, whitetails. Okay. Next, digestibility is huge. What they eat means nothing if it's passed out the other side besides producing a little extra fertilizer. Yes, sir. And lastly, because the nutritional needs change throughout the season, what we offer if we want to do the maximum amount of good should change right along with it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Beautiful. Thank you. You just made us smarter once again. <laughs>